There is now an 800% buff to Living Bomb in PvP, leading to some truly broken damage, but somehow still not as broken as Demon Hunter, whose tier set was apparently bugged for the entire season. Small indie company, right? Anyway, it's been a while since our last tier list update, so let's see how the meta will shape up for the latest pirate patch. But before we get into it, did you know you can now sample skill cap guides for free? That's right, just head over to our Discord server and check out our class guides channel. There, you can learn the best arena opener for your spec, which comes directly from our website. And if you like what you see, click the link in the channel or the one below to get instant access to over 250 hours worth of WoW content. We are even offering every user free monthly VOD reviews, which is a value of over $500 for as little as $6.99 a month. As always, everything is backed up by a rank up guarantee, which promises you gain over 400 rating while using our service. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started today. Anyway, back to the video. First up, let's look at the biggest melee winners from the latest round of hotfixes. Up first is Survival Hunter, who got a flat 3% damage increase and a 16% buff to Mongoose Bite. Last tier list Survival was already on the A tier, and despite these damage buffs, that won't be changing. The spec is still really strong, and players like Big Max even pushed it to rank 1 in solo shuffle before these buffs. But even according to the man himself, Survival isn't the best spec for everyone. It has a much steeper learning curve than other high tiers in solo shuffle, and can be exceptionally challenging to play. So because it is far less beginner friendly than other melee, it will be staying on the A tier once again. Arms Warrior is another A tier spec that won't be changing in our rankings, despite getting a damage buff to execute inside of PvP. Arms is definitely good, but suffers a similar problem to specs like Demo Warlock and Ellie Shaman. It does decent damage and has great utility, which makes it versatile with a wide range of classes, with the main downside being that it can't really win games by itself, relying on their partners to do the actual executing. Both Warrior specs also got a nerf to the Intimidating Shout talent that increased its damage threshold considerably. This allowed the fear to act as a pseudo stun effect, and was actually the reason Absturge died to a Warrior DH team in the last day of the AWC, so don't tell him about this nerf. But despite this, Arms Warrior is in a slightly better position compared to last patch, and now with nerfs to Demon Hunter, it will likely be a more competitive melee DPS. Our last melee winner is Feral Druid, who got a bit of a defensive bump with a healing increase to Frenzied Regeneration in PvP, which totally makes sense because the spec had the highest death rate across all ratings in Solo Shuffle. Now, before you get too excited, we don't think this will suddenly make Feral Druid overpowered. The spec still has some serious structural problems and is currently designed around being able to land Cyclones. The Wild Attunement PvP talent is like a tight leash for our kitty friends, encouraging a playstyle that is really restrictive and difficult to pull off in Solo Shuffle. And remember that in Solo Shuffle, dampening ramps up incredibly fast, so any self-healing buff is actually significantly weaker in games lasting longer than 2 minutes. In normal 3v3, Feral is actually doing okay since dampening is slower and Feral gets coordinated support from its teammates in order to land Cyclones, but the playstyle is too restrictive to pull off in the chaos of the solo bracket, and despite these recent defensive nerfs, the spec will remain on the B tier for now. With our biggest winners sorted, we move on to the two melee DPS who got nerfs in recent tuning. After tormenting the ladder for over two months, Demon Hunter finally saw some nerfs, both to passive survivability and damage. As it turns out, this season's two-piece set bonus was not getting the standard 50% PvP modifier, which meant it was doing way more damage than intended, so this bug fix might actually be a bigger nerf than most people realize. Of course, most players probably would have liked to see more nerfs to DH, or even a rework to some of the more annoying passives, like Glimpse, which is a frustrating mechanic to deal with in Arena. Overall though, Demon Hunter will remain on the S tier. Even though these nerfs might have put a small dent in their armor, the spec already felt S plus tier, so if anything, this just solidifies its placement even further. Moving along, Outlaw Rogue is another spec to receive nerfs, and will actually be moving down our tier list. Outlaw got a hat trick of nerfs affecting survivability, damage, and utility, which in combination with its relative difficulty to other melee means we're putting it down for now. Outlaw is an interesting spec that had performed well at high ratings this season, but underperformed at lower MMR. Right now on European servers, Assassination is slowly becoming the best performing solo shuffle spec at high MMR, and across both regions, every rogue spec is basically tied neck and neck. So after nerfs to Outlaw, we can't really justify keeping it above subtlety and assassination, and for the vast majority of players, it will remain a mid-tier spec. Now before we reveal our updated tier lists, let's look at recent trends in popularity for all melee specs. On North American servers, Demon Hunters are becoming less popular, with Arms Warriors, Ret Paladins, and Survival Hunters now seeing bigger relative populations on the ladder. 
In EU, the trend is somewhat similar. Demon hunters are on the decline, opening up more space for other melees. Seems like some players are just moving from one flavor of the month to another. That brings us to our updated melee tier list for patch 10.2.6. Overall, we're seeing downward trends. This even includes Fury Warriors and Enhancement Shamans, who both technically got some buffs in recent tuning. Of course, having more self-healing as an Enhancement Shaman is definitely a big plus, but remember, we're dealing with Solo Shuffle, where dampening ramps incredibly high. Just like other C tiers, Enhanced suffers more structural problems currently in the bracket and is maybe lagging a bit behind on mobility, which might be a bigger problem. Enhance will be moving down alongside Fury Warrior, who also got a buff to execute, but has struggled to see representation at the highest ratings. With less overall utility compared to arms, Fury is not quite a jack of all trades and will be a tier lower for the time being. All in all, melee seem a bit divided. There are some specs performing incredibly well and others which are in desperate need of some buffs. Now let's move on to ranged DPS, starting with our biggest winner. Fire Mage has looked quite hot this past week and will actually be moving up to the A tier. After getting a massive list of damage buffs across the board, most notably to Living Bomb, which deals splash damage and with a flame strike build can be applied to multiple targets. This has led to some pretty ridiculous Twitch clips with pet classes like Demo Warlocks, where Living Bomb is able to do insane AoE damage, especially during combustion. Despite some overtuned damage, we still don't think Fire Mage is S tier. It still suffers some defensive problems and can be really frustrating to play, especially into Hunters, which actually got buffed in recent tuning. Frost Mage also got some major damage buffs to Frostbolt, Ice Lance, and Flurry, but won't be moving up in our rankings. Last time we had Frost Mage on the A tier, which might have been a bit generous even at the time, as the spec still feels in need of a major rework, and these buffs don't really address the core problems with the spec, which include Button Bloat and a reliance on gimmicky burst. On a high note, Frost is still the most accessible mage spec, having a lower barrier to entry compared to Fire and Arcane. It will continue to be the best mage spec into melee heavy lobbies, where it's better at passively slowing down the game. So for anyone looking to try out mage for the first time, Frost is still the best option. And as a final note, we should mention that every mage spec got a small nerf to Ring of Fire. Moving on, Balanced Druid is another winner from the latest round of hotfixes, and will actually be moving up to the A plus tier. Now, with a slight buff to Frenzied Regeneration, Boomkins should have less survivability issues. Overall, Balanced Druids benefit more from this change since they have a much easier time avoiding damage compared to Feral. Balanced Druids have been a fairly consistent spec in Solo Shuffle, pairing well with a wide variety of specs while having more agency to actually close out games. The second use of Incarn is still incredibly deadly and with increasing haste values, Boomkins will have even more control in the near future. With our winners out of the way, let's move on to some of the specs losing steam going into the new patch. The entire Warlock class was hit with some nerfs to their mobility and saw an HP and damage reduction to Observer. Overall, these will likely impact Affliction Warlock the least since it didn't really have the PvP talent budget to play Observer to begin with and will be a minor dent to Demo and Destro. Speaking of which, Destro was hit with an additional nerf to their tier set with Flame Rift dealing less damage in PvP. And would you look at that, the two best specs in Solo Shuffle just happen to have really good tier sets this season. Anyway, Destro will be staying on the S tier despite these nerfs. Just like Demon Hunter, it had such a big lead over other ranged DPS that these nerfs will likely unaffect its relative performance by much. The damage profile of Destro Warlock is simply too powerful, having not one, not two, but three sources of consistent instant cast damage. So while other casters are struggling to dish out pressure, Destro Warlock will continue to suffer from success. Now before we look at our updated tier list, let's see if there are any trends in ranged popularity across all ratings. Unlike Melee, there really aren't any standouts in North America. While Destro was quite pervasive a week ago, it seemed to have joined the bulk of A-tier specs, which are all relatively balanced in popularity. The story is more or less the same in Europe. Destro's lead had shrunk, joining the rest of the pack without any clear flavor of the month. Our updated tier list reflects some of these trends. As you will notice, we have nearly every spec in the A tier, which is why we had to create A plus to highlight relative differences. We're going to be moving Shadow Priest up a tier despite the spec not receiving any tuning. Currently, Shadow is doing some pretty impressive burst damage thanks to its tier set, which is part of a burst sequence combining Mind Spike and Catharsis, leading to a massive hit. Despite being a victim spec for most of the season, it's currently doing better than we initially expected. We've also moved Ellie Shaman up half a tier, despite no recent buffs. Ellie is very well-rounded and doing well in most lobbies, having more flexibility than other A tiers. Finally, there were some minor buffs to BM and Mark's Hunter, with a small nerf to Arcane Mage. We don't expect any of these to affect their relative performance, but for the meantime, we've actually moved BM Hunter down. 
Despite technically being buffed and highly represented, it doesn't feel quite as strong as Destro or any spec on the A plus tier. We've also moved Augmentation Evoker up a tier to reflect the overall upward trend of ranged DPS. The low representation of this spec is likely more a result of Devastation being stronger and easier, rather than Augmentation Evoker being super weak. Moving on to healers, there were a handful of minor buffs to some underperforming specs. First up is Disc Priest, who got a buff to Smite Damage and Atonement Healing, which will likely shift the spec towards a more aggressive build similar to Mythic Plus. Despite these buffs, Disc will be staying on the B tier for now. Although it's incredibly popular, it is simply outclassed by some of the other high tier healers. Right now, the current playstyle of Disc Priest requires a focus on dealing damage and healing with Atonement, which ironically means playing more safe and avoiding CC. Getting CC'd or interrupted can really be punishing as a Disc Priest since the spec is so global intensive. While Disc definitely has good cooldowns for Solo Shuffle, its output is still lagging behind and we don't expect these buffs to dramatically change that. Next up is Holy Priest, which was one of the few specs to get changes in the Pirate Patch, seeing major reworks to its talent tree. Before this update, Holy was definitely struggling, but after talking to Holy Priest mains about the changes, we think the spec could be a wild card A tier. Prior to this, Holy was struggling in healing output and was extremely punished by interrupts and long CC chains. The redesign to Lightwell seems interesting and could solve both of these issues, but the talent is buried on a weird part of the tree, which would mean giving up other talents that increase healing output. Not exactly the trade needed for a spec that struggles with, well, output. But if the rest of the redesign is enough to solve some of Holy's healing issues, we definitely feel confident in its new A tier placement. Moving on, Mistweaver Monks got multiple sets of buffs and a few nerfs that will overall help both Fistweaver and the traditional caster spec. Currently, Fistweaver seems to be the stronger spec overall, with caster monks feeling a bit too slow for solo shuffle. Just like Disc Priest, Monk can easily fall behind if CC'd or interrupted, since its healing output actually has a small ramp time to be effective. Because of this, we don't really expect these buffs to make it feel much better. Casted Mistweaver needs some more structural changes in order to stop underperforming. After speaking of an underperforming healer, Preservation of Ochre also got some buffs aimed at solving some of its PvE problems, mixed in with a PvP specific buff to rewind. At the higher end of the ladder, Preservation of Ochre is actually performing pretty good, despite being outclassed by Resto Druid and Holy Paladin overall, and is even seeing higher win rates on EU across all ratings, going up by 2.5% in the last week. The elephant in the room is its higher skill floor, which makes it underperform at lower ratings. So although some rank 1 players might consider Preservation of Ochre to be a high tier spec, we're going to balance out its steep learning curve by placing it on the A tier for now since it's clearly showing potential. The last healer to get buffed in hotfixes was Holy Paladin who got a set of damage increases of all things. Last time we had Holy Paladin on the S tier and we're going to stand by that decision. Paladin continues to be one of the best options for the bracket, having exceptionally strong cooldowns and good healing output even if it's susceptible to getting trained. These damage buffs will likely feel more impactful in other brackets, but definitely give Paladin more agency in Solo Shuffle. Before we show our updated tier list, let's look at some trends in healer popularity across all ratings. In North America, Disc Priest and Resto Shaman have held a lead for the past week, with Mistweaver Monk seeing some upward trends and Preservation of Ochre continuing to be the least popular healer. Trends are similar on EU. Disc is still the most popular healer, despite being mid-tier, and Preservation is also the least popular, staying consistently low over the past week. And to wrap up this video, let's take a look at our updated healer rankings. After its rework, Holy Priest will be the main spec to monitor in the coming weeks. If the redesign can significantly increase its output, we could definitely see it moving up a tier. Overall, the healer meta is pretty split. There are some very high-performing specs, with a few lagging noticeably behind, similar to what we've seen on the melee side. For the meantime, we will be moving Preservation of Ochre up a tier, keeping in mind that it might perform worse at lower MMR. And as a final note, Rest of Druid was kinda nerfed in the March 13th hotfixes since it can no longer stack reforestation in the starting room. This was a small bug that gave Druid a slight advantage in the early game, and they should be totally fine without it. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. 
We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Anyway, guys, that wraps up our tier list update. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.